Hey guys, Jeff with OptionBoxer.com. So I want to take some time today and I'll do this as quickly as I can. It may get a little bit lengthy and kind of go through the steps that I'm going to show you here in this presentation, but I wanted to look again at covered calls. And before we get into that, please know I'm not a registered financial advisor and this video is not a recommendation for you to buy or sell any security or place any trade. Uh, but I want to look at the covered call position again and kind of walk you through some of the steps that I take every time I trade a covered call and maybe that, that'll help kind of identify what you can do when a, a trade goes against you or maybe how do you say when, when a trade's not working the way that you want it to. And so I just want to walk through the different steps and I think I broke it down in, in logical order so that you can kind of see all the different details and all the nuances to the strategy. And uh, so the first thing I'm going to look at here, and I've got it on the screen as we speak, um, the first thing is going to look at kind of this flow chart and I know it looks kind of crazy, maybe a little bit scary even at first up here and we'll walk through them very briefly, but, uh, and we'll discuss each of these steps in the slides that follow. You're going to start with a new covered call position. You, you want price on the chart to be increasing. You want a, a bullish stock. I also should say at this point that I, I usually trade this on dividend Kings, dividend arist uh, aristocrats. I don't trade this on some of these crazy Peloton. Um, I, I don't trade it, you know, a GameStop. I don't trade it on these meme stocks. I trade it on companies that I would want to hold long term. The, the the added bonus or the benefit there is they also pay a dividend, so you get that little extra cherry on top, so to speak. Uh, but the, the the new covered call position, you want a price to be increasing. If the price goes up, you should be able to close your shares for a profit, or you should be able to close the position as a whole for a profit, and then you can just start the process again. Um, you you can come up with whatever percentage return makes sense. You know, if you want to make five percent, ten percent, whatever that may be, you'll have to just adjust and, and set up the position accordingly. I normally sell the near month call. Occasionally, if I'm holding the bag or something, I may go out further than that. But uh, but these are steps that um, I generally take, and this is what I I, I want to do every single time. Now, sometimes the market doesn't allow for it, and we'll kind of go through some of those contingencies as we unfold this, this presentation here. But uh, if price decreases, well, like anything in life, when there's a problem, you're gonna have to do some work to try to overcome the problem. And so if the price decreases, uh, you can see I've got it broke down in, into different uh, kind of levels there, one to 5%, six to 10, 11 to 20, and then anything greater than 20%. Um, there, there is always the the other alternative. It's a, if if you're in a bear market and the price has declined by more than twenty percent, you could abandon the strategy. Um, however, I don't love to do that. Although I I have done it and probably will do it again. Uh, I don't love that. I always want to try to close the position for a profit if I can find an adjustment that makes sense. But you can see right there, if it's a one to five percent decline, I'm just going to roll to the next month. I mean, it's a temporary paper loss on the shares. And uh, so at that point, I, I probably, especially if it's near expiration, I probably would have received the total credit. Uh, if it's a six to 10% decline, you can see I kind of got three arrows coming off of that one. Uh, that means that you could really do any of those three things. I mean, you could really do anything on any amount of decline or any amount of gain. You could, the, the options are unlimited, but I wanted to keep it simple and logical. And so typically, or what I would prefer to do is just buy to close the short call. If, if you get a 10% decline, uh, let's say on Coke and it trades down by $5 a week, two weeks time, you just open the call and suddenly you find yourself down. Well, that call, that short call should be worth the majority of the premium that you sold it for. So the one of the options you can take and one that I like is you could sell or you could buy back that call and then sell that exact same strike at that exact same month, just sell it for a higher price and just put that in as a good till cancel order and then just wait and see if it gets filled. And you might be able to get that same strike and that same call. Everything remains exactly the same. The only difference is now you're taking a little extra premium and you're able to bring it back into the position. Uh, if it's a, a larger decline, 11 to 20%, I'd like to roll the short call to the to a leap option uh, to collect some even better premium. You know, you may only get 50 cents at, at, on the near month call, but you may be able to get $2.50 if you roll it out to 400 and something days. And so the, the idea there is just to take that premium that doesn't exist on the near month because of the decline at your strike price. And you want to always maintain a strike price above your cost basis. And so you might not be able to get the premium that you need to continue making the, the percentage return that you want. I try to go for about 5% per month. And so sometimes it's just not possible and you have to roll it out to that, that leap option. Uh, and then finally, if there's a large decline, well, you're really going to have to do some work to get this position back to where you can manage it. And as you can see, the, the kind of the steps there, uh, buy to close the short call. So whatever uh, call you currently have open, you're going to buy to close that. Um, you're going to buy to open one leap option. So you're going to go out four or five 
100 days, three, whatever it may be. And then you're going to sell to option open. So if you go 300 days to expiration on the long uh, leap or the long option, well, you're going to want to go 250 days to expiration or whatever the next month uh, before that is and sell two uh, near term leaps for a credit. And so it would be better if you could sell that those two leaps at a higher strike price, the leap that you bought. And the reason is because, you know, if price does start to move in your favor, you would like that long leap to start gaining a profit quicker than the short call loses money, if that makes sense. Um, and then you can always, it, you know, let's say you took $2 for the leap option and you paid a dollar for the, or you, you took in $2 for selling the two uh, long-term leap options, but you only paid a dollar, but you only paid a dollar to open the, the long leap. Well, once you've opened the long leap, you still kind of have that dollar. Now that's more for downside protection, but it's still there in case price continues to fall. You would have made profit on your short calls um, and you still had that kind of that gap there between what you sold it for, the credits you took in and what you paid for the, the long term leap. And so you could always average down that leap. The, the key thing here when, it, when you're looking at a serious decline in the asset that you're holding is just trying to give you enough of an accelerant, uh, for lack of a better word, enough of an accelerant. So if, if a bullish move does present itself, well, you're, you're able to capitalize two, three, maybe even fourfold, depending on how many long options you hold and try to just get that back to a point where you can get out of the position and move on. Um, at the end of the day, you're trying to, and you can see there on the right side of the screen, at the end of the day, you're just trying to close the position for a profit and, uh, and go back to the beginning and repeat the process. So ideally, I'd like to earn about 5% per month from a strategy like this. If you can get more, uh, especially sometimes if you get your shares called away, it's, it's quite all right. Sometimes you're going to earn more than 5%, maybe even 9, 10% in a month. And so those uh, those returns really start to add up over time. And we'll look at, you know, later on in this presentation, we'll look at how those returns can stack up over the course of several years. Uh, but that's it for this kind of this flow chart. You can uh, print this, you can save it, whatever you need to do. Maybe it'll help you. But we're going to look at each of these steps kind of in a little more detail as we go through. And I've, went, I've been fairly detailed in my description at this point, but uh, sometimes it helps to kind of break it out into in step-by-step form. So if you're entering a new position, um, again, I, I look for the dividend aristocrats or the dividend kings. I like those because they're not high flying stocks. So generally speaking, they're not going to go up 10, 20 percent. They're not going to go down 10, 20 percent any given day. They can, but they're they're not as likely to as maybe GameStop would be. Um, I, I also want it to be a bullish chart. I want the fundamentals to be bullish. Um, I want to enter position on a down day or after a cons or after several consecutive down days. So let's say we've got Coca-Cola again. And it's you know faced a little bit of a bearish run over the past week and a half. Well, that would be probably a good day, especially if it's in a long-term uptrend. That would probably be a good day to start a covered call position because it's been trending lower, so you can get a better entry price uh, on the call. I'll, I'm looking for near months, so within 30 days, if I can get three to five percent on my on the premium uh, with only 10 days left, then that's the one I'll trade because I, I want to compound my returns as often as I can. Um, I want it to be always above my cost basis. If, if possible, I, I have broken that rule before. Um, but if at all possible, you want it to be above your cost basis. Um, and then if the above criteria isn't possible, you could consider another position or you could just wait on that position to enter the call or to, to buy the shares, whatever it may be. Moving on. If there's a price increase, kind of like I already said, you basically just want to take the profits. Um, the sh you can let the shares get called away. That if, if, if the called away return, if you net more money that way, then let the shares get called away and then start the position again after that's done. Um, if it's better or easier or better return to to close the, the call in the open market and then close the shares, then I, I obviously do that as well. You just have to kind of look at the situation as, as it is and see what makes the most sense. And then, of course, begin the process again. Um, and this is just another kind of a rehash of what I've already discussed. So I won't go through each of these again. But um, if the price has decreased, there's a couple of maybe questions that you want to answer. Uh, ask yourself, how severe was the price decline? Does the premium requirement uh, still exist? If it doesn't, well, now you've got to start thinking about rolling it to a leap option or start to think about some of these adjustments that we talked about. And again, they're all fairly interchangeable. You can use any of these adjustments at any given time. Uh, but if you've only been in the position for a week and it's only down 5%, ideally the thing is to just sell the next month call or, or take whatever profit you can there, or just wait for that call to afford you a little more profit and then start to take some of these steps. Uh, again, there's no 
cookie cutter recipe that I could give you. They're probably, I'm sure somebody out there has created one, but there's no cookie cutter recipe. Um, with options, there's there's always just that. There's always options you can take and there's always steps you can take to mitigate risk or to potentially enhance returns. And uh, in this case, these are the steps that I like to take. Number one, because I understand them. Number two, they're relatively simple. And once you have a grasp on options trading, um, they, they're really not all that complex. But again, there they are on the screen. Uh, some important notes before we kind of kind of wrap up here with the the slideshow uh, avoid closing the position for a net loss if at all possible if you keep if, you know let's say the price stays around five percent you you enter a position at 50 and it goes down to you know 47 and it, it kind of just stays in that three to five percent window for the life of the trade and you just keep rolling the call rolling the call and just keep collecting more and more credit um, at some point, you will have lowered your cost basis to a, a reasonable amount, or you may have even made a net profit, uh, even though you have to have to trade and sell the shares at a loss. Um, if price declines greater than 20%, close at break even or a small profit. Again, if the price just kind of falls off a cliff after you get into a covered call, you're really not looking to profit at that point. You're just looking to avoid loss. And uh, if you can profit at the same time, then again, that's just kind of a bonus. Uh, but you're going to seek to eliminate the underperforming asset as quickly as possible. The long leaps calls are meant to, like I've said, accelerate any bullish movement. Um, you'll know that if you get into a stock at 50 and it falls down to 40 or 35, you may get a bullish run, but it only comes back up to 40. It never goes back to 50. So you're just trying to accelerate that smaller uh, move um, by using those leap options. And then you're going to finance those leaps with the short calls. You're all, you're, the, the, the short calls kind of are twofold. They both finance the long leap and they, they also provide you a little bit of downside protection, um, a little bit of income to keep the kind of the theta income rolling um, while you uh, attempt to rebound from the, the, the losing position. Again, right there, the, the leaps are meant for an additional downside premium and to finance the, the long call. If you're going to close the shorts, you want to make sure you close them for as much credit as you possibly can. And then, or if you're closing along, let's say you're profitable on your, your leap, your long leap, um, and you want to close one of those, well, you're going to have to close the short too. Uh, seek to compound returns by utilizing all available capital. Well, that may or may not be possible. It just depends on what asset you're trading or how much capital you have, but, but you want to seek to use as much capital as you can so that you can compound the returns over time. You use 1000 this month and 10,000 next month. You're not compounding 5% over and over again, or 10% or whatever your return may be. Um, even small one or two percent returns over time can can really make a huge difference. But that that kind of wraps up some important notes. And just to kind of look at this, this is more just for fun. You can see the totals on your screen there. I won't spend too much time here. Uh, but if you just made one percent uh, per month uh, on a position, which is very doable, um, r realistically, it, it, two or three percent is is pretty average. And so if you can earn two or three percent, you can see over the course of a year you make four thousand on ten thousand. That's a forty percent return. Uh, if you have 4% growth, you can make 6,000. And then of course, right there at the end, if you have 5% growth each month, uh, you can make 79% returns or 7,959. So really, uh, really powerful on a small amount. And I just wanted to give you kind of an example. And then if you're able to do that over a longer time period, if you stay consistent, which is a very challenging thing to do, but if you are able to stay consistent over the course of time, uh, you can see if you were able to earn 5%, which is why I target that amount, if you were able to earn 5% each and every month at the end of only 10 years, you would have $3 million, just insane um, the amount of money you can, can make uh, over time. Uh, but look at the difference between 1% and 3%. It goes from 33 to 347,000. Uh, and then of course, a, another huge jump from 3% to just 4%. So it's kind of crazy how the small percentage points over the course of time and consistency uh, really make a huge impact. And some common arguments uh, as we wrap up here, common arguments, what if the invested amount declines and you're not able and it never comes back? And I've already kind of touched on that a little bit, uh, but that's why we adjust. That's why we have these kind of these rules or these risk mitigation techniques that we can use in the options market. This is also why I prefer the dividend aristocrats or the dividend kings is because they've weathered storms over uh, over the course of time. They continue to raise their dividend. They're not high flying stocks. They're not. They're probably not even really considered growth stocks anymore. They they've already experienced their growth and now they're paying most of that growth out uh, to you, the investor. And so that's why I like those. And then of course, as an added bonus, you do get that dividend uh, occasionally if you're in the position when the dividend is uh, paid. 
Uh, what if I'm unable to earn the stated return each month? Well, you could consider another position or you could wait for maybe implied volatility to increase and you could probably uh, get in uh, with a little more premium there. Uh, what if price accelerates quickly and I lose the upside potential on the shares? Well, that's very possible. You're, the thing about a covered call position is you, it's kind of a trade-off between what you know and what you don't know. You don't know if the price is going to go higher um, in the next 10 days or the next week or the next year. Uh, but you can be relatively sure that if you sell a, a call with a premium of, let's say, 8%, well, you're going to get that 8% one way or another, whether price goes higher, whether price goes lower. Now, sure, your core investment may go down, uh, but you're going to make that 8%. And if you can continue to make that 8, 7, 8, 9, 5, wh whatever the percentage may be each and every month, over the course of time, at some point, Coca-Cola is going to come back to your cost basis. Uh, but uh, the, the most important aspect to, to any trading strategy, I think, is just don't lose money. And if you're not losing money, you, you can always work on earning more money from your assets. But uh, again, it kind of goes back to why I like, uh, you know, well, brand name companies, well-known companies that pay dividends. And then, of course, I'm not even factoring in the, uh, the, the thought of dividends or dividend growth. And that just kind of makes it a little bit sweeter. But uh, final thoughts is if the market is aggressively bearish, collect as much premium as possible. If you're in a position, um, and that's why we kind of have the leaps options, you're going to want to collect as much premium as you possibly can. You could also wait to enter the position. And, uh, and then uh, as a final alternative, you could seek another investment opportunity. If you're already in a position, then again, you're going to want to collect as much premium as you can. Um, if the market is aggressively bullish, Collect a smaller amount of premium to, to give some room for the stock to, to move up. Uh, you definitely don't want to cap your upside unnecessarily. If you, again, are 98% sure that the stock is going to go up, well, give yourself a little bit of breathing room. Collect what premium you can and then just wait for the stock to, uh, to go up and then call the shares away. Um, when shares are called away, monthly return can sometimes, especially if you give yourself that breathing room, can sometimes be greater than the 5%. You may end up with a 10, maybe 15, even as high as maybe 20%. Um, depending on where you sell the strike at and how aggressive the bullishness is. Um, it isn't always possible to compound all available capital. Obviously, that goes without saying, but I wanted to make sure I did. Uh, if you have a $10,000 account, you may only use 8900 of it for whatever position you're in or whatever multiple positions. Um, as capital increases, diversification should also increase. Um, it's never a bad idea to have a diversified portfolio. If you have some consumer staples, some energy, uh, some technology and so forth and so on and several times the dividends on these investments are just a nice added bonus but um, that's it for kind of going through the presentation here uh, i know i was long-winded and i wanted to share everything with you but enjoy guys and uh, we'll catch you on the next video